Hi there, welcome to Beagle Selling Pro. If you are the one who's interested to know more about Microsoft Power BI Premium, what is it, how to use it, what are its features, how to control it, etc., then this series is going to be for you. Today, we are going to start a very fresh series on Microsoft Power BI Premium, and this is the very first episode of it. So, if you want to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video, and I'm going to let you know everything about it. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. First of all, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon. Not only that, share with your friends so that they can also stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, let's talk about Microsoft Power BI Premium. First of all, you would be wondering what is it? Well, if you are following our channel or you are learning from our videos, then you know that recently I posted a post where I explained what are the different Power BI licenses. And not only that, we have certain other videos as well where I have explained that what are the Power BI licenses and how you can decide which license you are going to need it for your own organization. I'm also going to provide those links in the description section, so please don't forget to check those videos out. Now, Microsoft Power BI Premium is nothing but it's a capacity-based license. We have Power BI Premium per user and also Power BI per capacity-based license. So here we are going to talk about Power BI Premium per capacity license. That means you are going to get a dedicated capacity for your own organization that you can utilize to post your Power BI contents on Power BI services or publish your content on Power BI services and then anyone else can consume all those contents or the Microsoft Power BI artifacts. That means all the Power BI artifacts that you have published on Power BI services that can be shared with your other colleagues inside your organization. Now, we are going to discuss about the features that Microsoft Power BI Premium brings in this video, we are going to focus on that. In the next video, we are going to discuss something else about Microsoft Power BI Premium. So let's start over here. The very first is the advanced AI. If you are going to work with Microsoft Power BI Premium, then you are going to get access of certain AI related features. And what are those? Those features are going to be cognitive analysis. Then it can be your machine learning using Azure. And not only that, you will also get automated machine learning algorithms over there. So you will get all these advanced features in Microsoft Power BI Premium, which are not available for Power BI Pro license. So this is the number one that you can perform advanced analytics using Microsoft Power BI Premium. Now, moving forwards, asynchronous refresh. And you would be wondering what is asynchronous refresh? Asynchronous reference, you can consider it related to the REST APIs. Previously, we call it asynchronous, but nowadays it calls enhanced refresh in Microsoft Power BI. You need to refresh your data set time to time. And when you can refresh your data set, that totally depends on how frequently your data source is being updated. In organization, we need to follow the event-driven architecture. That means whenever something is going to get updated in your data source, then you would like to update your data set as well. In order to do that, you may need to use the REST APIs. And if you would like to use the REST APIs, then you need to have Power BI Premium license. You cannot do that using your Power BI Pro license. So that's where it comes into the picture that if you would like to use the asynchronous or enhanced uh, refresh of your data set, then you need Power BI Premium. Moving forward, the third part is automatic aggregation. Consider automatic aggregation is a way to optimize the performance of your reports for the dashboards. Whenever you are going to publish your data set in Power BI service, over there, there is an option which you can enable under the data set settings of automatic aggregation. This is going to perform automatic aggregations and it's going to boost the performance of your data set. Isn't it amazing? Try it out. You will definitely feel the difference in the performance of your report rendering on Power BI service. Moving forward, there is an auto scale. Now you must be wondering what is auto scale. Well, let me tell you guys. Auto scale is a way that you don't need to buy or upgrade to additional capacity, but you can set the auto scale. So whenever there is a peak utilization of your Power BI Premium capacities, then it can automatically add one recourse to your Power BI capacity. But please do remember that this may be a very expensive option for your organization. So you can try it out for one day or something because every 24 hours it's going to add one week course. And it can go for a maximum whatever you are going to decide when you are going to set up the auto scale. So please do read the warning. Microsoft documentations are always in place. And if you need any help, please do reach out to us. We are going to help you out. Number five is backup and restore. Since 
Power BI Premium offers XML connectivity. And what is XML connectivity? XML connectivity is XML analysis. That means you are going to get one SQL server like endpoint that you can use to connect with your external tools. And I'm going to come to that point as well. So once you are going to do that, with the help of that, you can either connect to SSMS and then you can back up your data sets over there. Not only that, you can also store all the content into your data lake as well on Microsoft Azure. So this is going to be very helpful when you would like to back up your workspaces data over there. Now, number six is bring your own key. And bringing you, bring your own key is a concept where you can encrypt the data with your own key that you don't need to share with anyone else. Even Microsoft is not gonna go to know about that. So this is very important for the point of view when it comes to the security and governance. So if you would like to encrypt your data with your own key, then this can be very helpful for you. And there's a very particular, and there is a lot of articles over there on the internet if you would like to check that out. Also, you can notice that at the right hand side bottom corner, there is a one website from where I picked this image. That article is very insightful. If you would like to check that out, please use this website and you can go and check this article. Not only that, I'm also going to provide you the link of this article in the description section. So please don't forget to check it out. Now coming to the part of data flows. Data flows are the part of Power BI Premium Feature List. And data flows are basically going to act as a views at your database. So you don't need to create the views into your database, but you can create the data flows and then can ingest the data from data flows to Power BI. You can perform all the Power BI transformations in the data flows, but there are certain limitations as well. So all the features that I'm explaining here, there is always certain benefits and limitations as well. So please don't forget to check them out whenever you are going to work with any of these features. Then again, the data marts. So data marts, you already know that data marts are basically a subset of your own data warehouse. So if you would like to create the data marts, you can do that. But please do remember that this is still in preview. So if I would be you, I won't use any of the features which is in preview for my production load or to share with the end customer. So if you would like to share this with end user, then please wait till it becomes generally available. Right now, data marts are in preview only. So you can try them out, but do not share with the end users over there. Then there's a the deployment pipelines. I have already created a couple of videos on deployment pipelines. Deployment pipelines are nothing but whenever you need to move your Power BI artifacts such as your reports, dashboards, or your data sets from dev to test or test to staging or production, then you use the deployment pipelines. And this is the feature of Microsoft Power BI Premium. If you don't have premium or PPU license, then you cannot use them out. Next is direct query in data flows. So direct query in data flows allows you to directly query your data flows. So data flows, you can store a lot of data, you can create all the manipulations of the data you can perform your etl operations with the help of data flows and you can use data flows via direct query in real time but in order to use that you have to make sure first of all you are going to go to the data flow settings and then you have to enable the enhanced compute engine settings over there if you are not going to do that then you won't be able to use that and also please remember that once you do that after that you have to refresh your data flow otherwise you cannot use the direct query once you do that, then you would see that there is a different icons over there, like tables overlapping on each other icon whenever you are trying to connect with that particular data flow. So select that one, and when you load the data, then you would see the option of import versus direct query. So then you can use the direct query over there. Now moving forward, there's the hybrid tables. And what are hybrid tables? Well, whenever you are working with a huge amount of data, then you need to find the different ways that you can optimize your Power BI performance. And this hybrid table feature is still in preview, but what you can do with the help of this, you can keep certain amount of data in your fact table in the import mode. Then you can also incrementally refresh that and the latest data you can do in the direct query mode. So basically you can use both import and direct query mode in the same table. Isn't it amazing? So please guys try this out. This feature is a game changer. If you want to know more, please do leave your comment in the comment section and we are gonna create a video on that. Next to the insight, insight is a very interesting feature and you would be amazed at what you can do with this feature. So basically with the help of insight feature, you can just click one button and then you can even see whether there's an anomaly in the data or not. So do try this out on Power BI service. It's not available on Power BI desktop, but on Power BI service. Now, model size limit. Whenever we talk about the model size limit, that means how big your data set can be on Power BI service. Well, if you are using Power BI Pro, then you have a limit of 1 GB. But if you are using Power BI Premium, then you can build up to 400 GB of your data model. And not only that, if you are going to use PPU, then you can build up to 100 GB of your data model. Isn't it amazing? So this can be the another feature that may be very much useful for you when you are having a huge data sets. The next would be the multi-geo. That means you can 
locate your own data center anywhere in the world so that totally depends on you where you want to put your data over there and definitely you would like to choose which is the nearest to you so that you can consume data without any latency over there now next part would be the onboarding loading capabilities for large models so you can onboard any number of data models or data sets into Power BI services with the help of Power BI Premium. If you would like to know more about this, please do let me know Comment in the comment section. I really don't want to make this video very lengthy one, but I'm introducing you with all the features that you are going to get to know in Microsoft Power BI Premium. Next is Power BI Report Server. So Power BI Report Server is basically an on-premise service by Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft Power BI offers on-cloud and on-premise service. So if you would like to remain on-premise itself, that may be because of the security reasons and most of the bank prefers the on-premise solution. So then you can go with the Power BI report server. This also facilitates both Power BI service reports and capabilities as well as it's going to give you an option of the paginated reports. Paginated reports are similar to SQL Server reporting services. So choose wisely. But also there would be some feature differences which you are going to get on Power BI service on the cloud and which you are going to get on Power BI Report Server. So please do check all the details before jumping to any of those. Now coming to the refresh rate. When you are using Power BI Pro, then you can only refresh your data set eight times a day. However, if you are using Power BI Premium, then you can refresh up to 48 times a day. That means after every 30 minutes. But not only that, there is no limit of refreshing through the REST APIs. So if you have REST APIs, you can refresh your data set any number of times. Isn't it amazing? So please do check all the details as well regarding the refresh of your data set using Power BI Premium. Now, next is query caching. Query caching is just a way that it can cache the data, whatever is coming to your Power BI reports, and then it can boost the performance of your Power BI reports over there. So if you would like to check that out, please go to the settings and over there you are gonna find this option. And if you're using a large data set, then I'll always recommend you to please use this option. Enable it and then you would see the boost in your performance. I have already created a couple of videos on how to improve the Power BI performance. Then also I have created some of the shorts, so please do check them out on our channel. If you don't find anything, please do let me know in the, if you don't find those resources, please do let me know in the comment section. Next is the storage. So with the Power BI Premium, you can store up to 100 GB of data, while with the Power BI Pro, you can only store up to 10 GB of data in one workspace. So there's also a limit of how much data or content you can store in a workspace in Power BI. So this may be another reason that you would like to switch to Power BI Premium. Next is streaming data flows. So streaming data flows are for real-time data ingestion. If you would like to use them, then you have to again go for the Microsoft Power BI, for the Microsoft Power BI Premium. So if you are not using Power BI Premium, well, you cannot use the data flows and also you cannot use the streaming data flows. So streaming data flows are very important when you are ingesting the real-time data from your IoT devices and you want to generate the real-time reports over there on Power BI services. Next is unlimited content sharing. And what does that mean? Well, with Microsoft Power BI Premium, you just need a pro license to publish the content on Power BI services. For example, your organization has 20 developers, so 20 developers are gonna need the pro to publish the content on the Power BI service. But if your organization has like, let's say 10,000 end users with whom you want to share the report, then you can share with them free, of course. You just need to assign Power BI free license to all of them, and then you can share the content with anyone without paying any single penny to any without paying any single penny to Microsoft. Isn't it amazing? Well, for me it is, but you have to check it out whether you need Power BI Premium or you need Power BI Pro. I have already created a video on that, so please do check the comment. So please do check the link in the description section. Then it comes to the virtual gateways, or we also call them virtual network gateways, VNet. So VNet is a gateway which is in Microsoft Azure. So this is gonna take the dependency on the on-premise gateways. So if you would like to use them, they are also available. I have already created a videos on that as well. And now they are generally available. So this is the best part. So recently Microsoft has announced that they are available generally. So you can start using them. Then it comes to the XML connectivity or that is read and write. So basically you can do the read and write operation on your data set using XML analysis connectivity. And this is gonna be a very important part of your day-to-day -day Power BI activities. And why is that? Reason being, whenever you need to optimize your data set and reports, you may need to connect with the Dex Studio or you may need to connect with the SSMS to incrementally refresh your data set or refresh each partition of the data set. And there can be so many other cases 
one of the major cases can be the deployment if you are going to use the ALM tool etc so this is a game changer guys and this is really very important if you are an experienced Power BI developer you should know how to use XML connectivity within Microsoft Power BI this is it guys if you are looking for any training programs for Microsoft Power BI Microsoft Fabric Enterprise Data Analyst or any kind of training programs related to Microsoft Power BI Microsoft Fabric please do reach us out also, please stay tuned for all the updates and the latest videos that we are creating on. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. And I hope you are liking our contents. Please don't forget to share your feedback as well. I'm going to see you in the next video.